Good morning, everyone. Um, and this is the uh, Budget Subcommittee's um, uh, Friday meeting. As well, happy Halloween Eve to everyone. Uh, we're going to be hearing to this morning from the City Coordinator, uh, Communications Department, Intergovernment Relations Department, the Department of Neighborhood and Community Relations, and Minneapolis 311 all the first section of what we call affectionately coordinator day here at, uh, at the budget day. So these are a lot of our coordinator departments and we'll be hearing from more this afternoon. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and begin if that's all right. And uh, we'll uh, invite, because um, the easiest way to finish a day is to begin a day. So we'll hear from our city coordinator, Spencer Cronk. Good morning, Chair Quincy and council members. It's a pleasure to present the mayor's uh, recommended budget around coordinator department areas uh, today. We'll start with what I'm affectionately calling the enterprise management and planning uh, areas within the coordinator department. Uh, they comprise of a series of programs and initiatives, some of which uh, result in how we plan and manage our work, which is IGR, emergency management, strategic management administration, Another section in which the values which guide our work, which includes sustainability, arts, culture, and the creative economy, equity, inclusion, and the I team. Um, I'm gonna talk about a number of those areas, uh, invite up some uh, speakers to present those program areas and talk about the enhancements that were included in the mayor's recommended budget. We'll begin with our first core program, which is the intergovernment relations, and I will call to the podium Jean Ranieri, who will describe some of the core services in that area. Good morning, Mr. Ranieri. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members. My name is Jean Ranieri. I'm the Director of Government Relations for the City of Minneapolis. Uh, the department has a mission to represent the City of Minneapolis at the Legislature of Washington Metropolitan Council, work with our city's partners in developing policies that you know, make the city work and fulfill our goals and objectives. This, uh, over the last year and for the next year, we are proposing a budget for next year that does have no enhancements. It is basically a flat budget. We are fully staffed. We are ready for the 2016 session. Some of the things we do and some of the things we are doing this year, uh, we, of course, the major issue is the legislature. And 2015 was a long session, a budget session. Unfortunately, many of the major budget issues like a transportation bill and a tax bill have been pushed off to 2016, and we're working on that. In terms of how we work, over the last couple years, and the last two years particularly, we have worked closely with the city departments through a team, we call it the lay policy liaison team. We have a whole process of not only do we ask our departments what they need to do in terms of legislation or working with state agencies to help them perform their mission, but also to help them understand how state government, the legislature works. We've had uh, speakers come in from uh, the House, the Senate, staff departments, the governor's office, to try to have our staff understand. And what's also important is as a result of that, many of our people, in, in 2015, we had 47 different pe staff people be at the legislature either to testify, meet with legislators, or provide information to staff. So I think we're trying, and now this year, We've gone a little bit further for 2015 and 2016 is where we're trying to become more active in state agencies, the state department, state, excuse me, state associations, the metro cities and league of cities. And this year, uh, our staff and others sat on policy committees and were able to uh, get some of the ideas that we have been generating here on, as state policy. For example, uh, yesterday in the IGR committee, we talked about party buses. That is now uh, a possible uh, adoption, hopefully by the League of Cities Board as a policy for the League, and about five or six other policies that we worked on in that area. In terms of the federal legislation, hopefully Congress will, is beginning to show signs of being more functional. Uh, they did put some uh, issues dealing with the budget passed this week. There may be some opportunities for additional funding for domestic programs, including some of the programs we work on, and uh, that's hopeful. In terms of the, I think, a program where we've done more activity than in the past, is in the area of Metropolitan Council and Airports Commission. We've been able to hire staff. Uh, Ms. Olson has been fantastic. She's been help, very helpful with us in terms of the city, in terms of working with the Airports Commission and going through the entire process of starting a comprehensive plan, looking at Thrive 2040 and getting everyone engaged. So, Mr. Chairman, that's basically what we do uh, in terms of the budget. Uh, there are no major changes, and I will stand for any questions. 
Well, thank you very much, Mr. Ranieri. <clears throat> and uh, it's not in, in the case of the airport meeting where we're having conversations with Met Council members, we also have including uh, Metropolitan Airport Commission and uh, state legislators. And it's uh, really important, I think, in in that area as well as all the areas that affects uh, the city operations, how we're working with uh, multiple uh, jurisdictions and uh, policy leaders and uh, our staff provides tremendous support for that uh, for that mission. So thank you very much for you and for all the work of the Intergovernment Relations Department. Are there any questions for Mr. Ranieri on this section? Not seeing any, I think that indicates that we're very happy with the Intergovernment Relations Department. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Mr. Crunk. Uh, appreciate it. The overall enterprise management and planning areas within the coordinator department are overseen by Nuria Riviera Vandermine, and I'm going to call her up to <coughs> go through the rest of the programs in this department. Thank you, Council Chair, members of the committee. Uh, the strategic management and administration uh, is the management arm of the coordinator's office. It encompasses a variety of activities uh, aimed at increasing performance management services and skills throughout the enterprise. It is here where our results, Minneapolis, and our continuous improvement efforts are housed. Uh, there, we included some statistics about um, percent agreement on how we help, and, and actually this encompasses our uh, ACC departments on uh, management survey on how we help other departments across the enterprise. But to really focus on the enhancement request, and there are a variety of them uh, within this um, rubric. Um, so I'll go through them and happy to stand for questions on each and every one of them. The first enhancement request uh, responds to centers of excellence, and that's really just a term of art that is aimed at or it refers to a team that provides leadership, best practices, research support, and or training for a particular focus area. And in this case, we're really talking about performance management and strategic leadership activities. Uh, this enhancement would allow us to increase our continuous improvements effort specifically as demand has continued to increase throughout the enterprise and the projects we're involved in uh, have increased in complexity and often span multiple departments. So some of the demands that we've been asked for, some of the activities that we've been asked to in the coordinator's office include a range of things like meeting facilitation, project management, process mapping, um, and this would allow us really to continue to um, provide more comprehensive and robust services throughout the enterprise as a whole. The next uh, enhancement has to do with autism awareness, um, and really it is a culturally specific targeted opportunity. As uh, many of you know, nationally one in about 100 children are affected by the disorder, but a 2013 University of Minnesota study indicated that it, the prevalence is much higher uh, in Somali children, about one in 32. New study shows that early intervention is critical, and this enhancement would really speak to providing outreach um, to families to seek early testing, to debunk some of the myths and the barriers that keep um, families from moving forward, um, and being able to figure out how to best uh, find um, some help and assistance for um, our Somali population. Um, we would be obviously partnering with our Department of Health and uh, working across the enterprise to um, assist in this effort, but really this effort is focused primarily on outreach and communications activities, creating videos um, that can really speak to the population um, and making sure that they are looking for um, additional services in this regard. Uh, any questions on this particular? Enhancement request? See one? Okay. Uh, Council Member Gordon. Actually, it's on the last enhancement request. Sure. Okay. Um, the Centers for Excellence, I, mm -hmm. I noticed it, it looks like it was it's one time funding for one um, FTE. And is the, um, is the assumption that we're only going to be needing that additional person for one year? No, the uh, Council Chair, <laughs> Council Member Gordon, the assumption is that, that uh, those monies would pay for an additional staff, but as we're looking to see how this is going to be, we have opportunities actually to partner with um, the University of Minnesota and um, do some partnerships with Metro Lab as well. So the assumption is that as we continue to figure out how to make a more robust 
uh, program that the additional staffer would assist initially in um, moving forward some of the efforts and keeping up with the demand that we simply cannot do right now uh, because there's only one person who's doing continuous improvement efforts at the moment. Um, but then as we look forward that we would be able to um, figure out a more comprehensive approach to what that looks like going forward because it could be that it's not an FTE but a partnership activity. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Um, I had a, a question as, as well on, on this and uh, several of the other enhancements, but I think I'll uh, let uh, Council Vice President Glidden ask her first. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I think we may have the I same have, question. I, I don't know if we do or not. I have no idea. Um, I had one back on the Centers of Excellence, and then I had one on the autism one. Um, so for the Centers of Excellence, um, that seems like a somewhat high amount for a one time. And so can you tell me a little bit more about how the amount was derived? Um, it seems a little bit like this might, you know, again, cause it's like a one time. So it seems like a uh, salaried person plus some additional resources for, I don't know, what, what may come up or so forth. So can I hear more about the amount? Sure, Chair Quinn State Council Member Goodman, uh, Glidden, sorry, excuse me. Um, originally when the uh, enhancement was conceived, it was thought to be a uh, full-time resource person. Um, but as continuous conversations happened with departments about what their individual needs were, it was clear that there was a breadth of activities that they were looking for. In some cases, it was for um, project management, which would be a contracted service. In some cases, it was for facilitation meetings and using our internal service uh, person and then continuing to do training. So the thought is to look across the enterprise, ensure and using a, a group actually that has now been um, conceived for administrators across the enterprise to get their input on how they would want to see this uh, use the service is to really we need an additional person as we move forward on um, our continuous improvement efforts. But the level of that of, of that FTE is yet unknown in terms of whether it's going to be a program assistant or what what kind of uh, classification that would be. And then continuing to move forward on uh, what types of contracts or what types of services and partnerships we could um, obtain with the U of M and the Metro Lab, which is currently an ongoing effort. So, okay, that's helpful. I I then had a question on the autism awareness, and I will say I'm going to listen to your description of some of these other enhancements, too, and my questions here may be a little bit mm -hmm. similar to some I might have on the other enhancements. So I, I just am a little bit flummoxed by the autism awareness project being described here. Um, I, it's not because it's not an important issue. Um, I'm wondering what department is doing this work? What work can you really do for $20,000? Um, why isn't this in the health department or some other department that does more community work around important health issues? What's, anyway, I just, it seems like an odd item for $20,000 put in the coordinator's budget. So. But before sure. you begin, Ms. Rivera, this is exactly the question I was asking, so I'm really happy that okay. we have that same kind of question. I think it is going to come up in, a, in yes. a, a lot of these, is why are they here, and then what, what can we do with one-time funds? Chair Quincy, Council Member Glidden, um, the reason <clears throat> that this is here is that it's because it's a very narrow focus. It is, uh, it is meant to be in conjunction with the activities that the Department of Health currently does, in this area, um, this is meant to really be culturally specific and really aimed at um, looking at the communications piece, the outreach piece, and in particular in our Somali community where um, video technology will be critical to how we do this, is figuring out um, mechanisms for transmitting information, for increasing education, for doing some outreach and making sure that folks are then um, sort of directed and guided to go seek help and assistance and going to their providers. It is not meant to provide direct on service. It is really meant to, to do, to enhance communication 
and um, outreach efforts in particular, and that is why it is a very targeted approach. And it, it is similar to um, some of the other items that are becoming later. So I guess my follow-up questions here on this are, um, did someone ask us to do this as a partnership? What does the what budget does the health department have right now that is targeted to work around autism and kind of that awareness piece? And what is the county and the school district doing on this piece in the state? I just I say that again, not because I don't think this is an important issue. It is a extremely important issue, but it's one also that I know that's been kind of rising to the top. And I. Again, so I just am a little surprised to see this this item here in here, and that's why I'm questioning how is this aligned with what I think are probably a lot of other efforts by others who spend a lot more time on this issue. Chair Quincy, Council uh, Member Glidden, I think it is. Uh, it it has been a request. It was um, a mayoral initiative that was placed here, and I think as similar some of the. But we'll see in some of the later enhancement. It is really. Was there an outside partner? So I, I know the mayor put it in here, but was there an outside partner that asked us to do this work? Uh, I am unaware, Chair Quincy, Council Member Glidden, I'm unaware of that, but we can certainly get you more information on that and more information on how this aligns with the Department of Health. Um, I'm happy to do that. But what I will say about this as well is that it is meant to um, really think about the coordinator's office as the convener and someone who coordinates efforts that go cross, particularly cross the enterprise. In this particular case, we would be partnering both with Department of Health, partnering with uh, NCR, who do our culturally um, cultural outreach throughout our communities, um, and really partnering with um, uh, a variety of um, other partners, and we've heard from Council Member Warsami's office uh, that he would like to partner in this initiative as well. So, but we can certainly get you additional information about how that aligns to current efforts and what those budgets are from the Department of Health. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Gordon, did you have a? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So this other enhancement is similar to the previous one. It is, again, a very culturally specific um, bike pedestrian outreach enhancement. Um, it is really meant to address the specific cultural barriers um, on learning to ride, how to ride, um, learning about bike resources and trails. It is really meant to also leverage um, the Midtown Greenway facilities and, amen and amenities with our East African communities. Um, a similar question will come as why is it in the coordinator's office or in this particular part of the budget versus um, NCR or sustainability? And again, both of those are um, part of the coordinator department. Um, our main focus in this is about outreach, about um, communications, about creating um, sustainable ways to enhance um, this mode of transportation within our um, immigrant communities. Uh, we also believe that this kind of project can be viewed as a pilot, and if we're successful in really targeting um, our cultural communities in this fashion, and the Somali community is one in which they have seen significant barriers to um, bike pedestrian uh, facilities, that we can then perhaps look at scaling this at other um, uh, some of our other cultural communities. Uh, I'm sorry, Council Vice President Glenn. So what department is leading that enhancement effort? Is that a communications project? Is that an NCR project? Is that directed by transportation and public works with assistance from communication or um, what? Uh, Chair Quincy, Council Member Glidden, this will be uh, an enhancement that will be led by our office, and uh, we will have sustainability and NCR working together. We will obviously be working uh, and reaching out to public works, um, but in part, it was really going to be uh, spearheaded by communications in terms of trying to get additional folks. Because it is a primarily cross-departmental, cross-coordinator departmental initiative, um, it, would be, it would seem right that it would be housed uh, within the coordinator's office. Thank you. 
Another enhancement is uh, the word gap enhancement. Research shows that children uh, from language deprived environments hear 30 million fewer words by age 40. Um, this results obviously in disparities that have a long lasting effects uh, as this moves forward. This uh, speaks to a national uh, initiative that is happening, and this one-time request is really about jump-starting the program um, for buying literacy kits, training, communications, uh, and really engaging with some of the partners. Again, one of the question would be why here, perhaps, and not in health, um, and to say that this program really uses a collective impact model that is similar to those seen in the Promise Zone initiatives, while this is an initiative that is expected to go citywide, its initial focus, and again, these are one-time funds just to get the program jump-started because it it's intended to leverage existing partners in the community. But its initial focus for this will be those partners in the, um, in the Promise Zone. And so we will be leveraging our lead in the Promise Zone to tap into those partners. And again, going across different um, different departments to engage not just the Department of Health, but also some of our other partners that are doing work in this arena. Uh, and they are both internal and external to um, the city. Go ahead. So I had a <clears throat> question on this one too. So you talked about these are, this is funding to, and this is quite a bit, so this is $50,000. Yes. Um, and I'd like to maybe get a more of an outline of what that funding is intended to be used for. But you say this is intended to jumpstart a program. Whose program? Uh, Chair Quincy, Councilmember Glidden, this is a program that is spearheaded from the mayor's office. Um, and so it's going to be a city program? It, it, is, uh, it will be led initially by city efforts in terms of how we move forward, um, but it will be leveraging our existing partners as we uh, – move outwardly. It is something that is aligned with a national initiative, um, and we will be leveraging uh, our, the partners that will be doing this work in the community will be really delivering the efforts. The University of Minnesota has um, obtained funding from external services to continue to monitor and track this as, uh, as we move forward, um, and it is part of um, a national model that is being launched, uh, so we are Right, but but what I'm trying to, to mm -hmm. ask and what I think yes. you're saying to me is that this is no one's program yet. We are looking for a program sponsor, and I am also interpreting from your comments you're looking for an external program sponsor. Would that be accurate? I mean, because you said the mayor's office doesn't run programs. Yes. The mayor's yes. office, you know, leads the city and has their, their staff help initiate policy and looks for external partners on a variety of things, but they don't run programs. And so, again, I know the mayor's office suggested this, and they're involved in a lot of things that are happening in the city, especially with the Promise Zone and others, mm -hmm. but I'm not hearing whose program it is. Chair Quincy, Councilmember Glidden, uh, mm -hmm. my understanding is that this uh, this is a, it, this is a um, joint program effort. And though while it uh, stems from the mayor's office, our Promise Zone lead will be uh, involved in making sure that we have leverage external partners. Like many of the Promise Zone initiatives, some of those will happen outside and external to the city, but it is about figuring out what that collective impact is, how to align those efforts, and see how those efforts contribute to some of the other efforts that are happening in the city. Um, who's, and so, the pro who's the Promise Zone lead? Uh, we have a manager of equity and inclusion, and Julie Learson in the okay. coordinator's office. Is so again, we're we're looking for someone to host the program. That's what I'm hearing you say. Um, or I, I want to understand. It maybe let me be even more clear. So it sounds like this is um, an effort that we're looking to replicate here that has been tried other places, or maybe there's a a model that's been developed, but we don't yet have a home for how this would roll out, and you are trying to determine if there would be an external partner or if the city itself would run this program over time. And that's part of my question because, yes. again, the city doesn't run programs yeah. like this mm -hmm. um, or hasn't typically in the past, and this is why I'm kind of concerned and want to make sure I understand this amount of investment in something that doesn't seem like it's got its foothold yet. Sure. Chair Quincy, Councilmember Glidden, I will um, cede the podium to Angela Watts, 
who is the mayor's lead on uh, this program. Chairman Quincy, Councilmember Glidden, thank you for the opportunity. We have partners in the community. We've tried this program through the uh, Northside Achievement Zone, as well as through our own Healthy Start program through the City of Minneapolis, the Department of Health. What this opportunity will do will allow us to build on that effort, put it in the proper zone, and then scale citywide. The cost of these items are really materials and program supplies, along with getting some technical assistance from the Clinton Foundation to make it scalable. So who's, who would run the program, though? That's what I'm trying to get at. So who would be responsible for this program in the Promise Zone and then taking it citywide? It will be a collective effort. So, for example, we already have community-based partners being the Northside Achievement Zone, Think Small, Children's Hospital. They have agreed through this collective impact model they would be the key lead agencies initiating the project. Through the Promise Zone, we will be tracking and measuring some of that, but the University of Minnesota, through their own efforts of research, will be helping track and co-manage that project as well. Okay, because that's different from what I thought I heard before, is that I heard the University of Minnesota is helping evaluate, yes, not run a program. But they're also the national lead for this program through uh, the Clinton Foundation's Too Small to Fail. So the University of Minnesota is going to run the program? They're going to evaluate and track it, but they're also on the Cradle to K cabinet, helping to shape it in terms of program design. Okay. Would it be fair to say then that this was a, an outgrowth of the Cradle to K cabinet work? Exactly. I see. And they're working on that as part of the subcommittee, putting together the structure for this. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, with Council Vice President Glidden on this this particular item, as well as anything. When we're putting twenty thousand dollars, is that enough to do anything? And then if we're putting in fifty thousand dollars, we really like to know where that money's going and who's it being, who's that yeah, check being written for? Like. And if you're suggesting that we're uh, in in charge of materials, uh, but who's in charge of developing those materials that we'd be paying for? That's an excellent question, uh, Chairman mm. Quincy and council members. Because we're going through a Clinton Foundation, the materials are already developed and packaged. We're essentially buying those materials. We're buying the brand of those packages and the model of those packaging. And in terms of sustainability, these collective impact partners have agreed to go to the philanthropic community and the corporate community for scalability and to expand the program. We're only seeding the program. Okay. And because the Promise Zone has the demographic that it has of young children, it is a primary focus, which is why we're trying to put it through the coordinator's office to make sure it has that intentional focus in the Promise Zone. Okay. Councilmember Fry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I believe you already you just asked the question that I was going to, which is who is the check being written to? And, and I didn't exactly hear an answer on that, but but do we know who? I mean, it says City of Minneapolis okay. too, and then. It will be the city of Minneapolis in terms of purchasing the kits, which are like books, CDs, materials that help parents learn about this intervention. Okay. And then placing those materials into the community through the coordinators. So office. the so the fifty thousand dollars that we are spending, we are spending, and they go directly to the purchase of materials. So the fifty thousand is not like being held in escrow and then ultimately no. given over to one of these other five. No, these go directly into the community for these kits. But we will be buying the technical assistance to be able to figure out how to leverage this across the city for scalability. Okay, so we buy the books and the materials, and then at some point in time, once this entity is created, then they get those books and materials? Who, who do the books and materials then go to? For example, it could go to the Northside Achievement Zone through their early education efforts, through their baby college, Children's Hospital, who are already working with young children. These materials would go there. Think Small, who's working in the community, those materials would go there. We're trying to create a brand and more of a systemic effort to make sure all the partners are doing the exact same thing, that it has the exact same look and feel, and the exact same intervention. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Palmasano. I don't mean to belabor this, but um, as I look online at the Clinton, Clinton Foundation and this too small to fail strategies and initiative, it seems like that is what we're buying into here, right? There isn't a program that is about word gap enhancement that's being run by the University of Minnesota. This is the too small to fail initiative, um, initiative by Correct. the Clinton Foundation. Foundation. And the university as a partner who's also involved with NAS is kind of one of our anchor partners in terms of program design and looking at evaluation services. But that program then would be run by NAS. It would have a role, NAS would have a role with that. 
It's going across multiple programs is what I'm saying. And we're basically buying supplies and the technical assistance to be able to leverage it directly from the city. Councilmember Fryer, you just, okay, that's fine. Uh, Councilmember Gordon. Well, I'll just add that um, the Youth Coordinating Board has been in, informed of the Cradle K effort and moving forward and is ready to be a partner in terms of what would happen with this elsewhere and how would this program materialize. And um, we'll, there is some coordination going on, just so you focus on that. Okay. In addition to the health department, they sit on the committee too for Cradle to K. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think you may have anticipated a few questions for your next slide. All right. <laughs> The next slide enhancement really speaks to partnerships initiatives. It is really to provide continuous funding for a variety of citywide efforts, uh, partnership agreements that have been authorized um, by the City Council. Past and current partnerships include the Midtown Community Works, um, which is to guide the redevelopment of Midtown Greenway and Lake Street Corridor, uh, Cedar Riverside, which is a partnership between the University of Minnesota and Cedar Riverside, the Botno partnership, which relates to the light rail lines, um, and to continue to, to fund those efforts as that moves forward. Council Vice President Glenn. So <clears throat> I know that in past years that we have had um, conversation about these partnerships. Um, also, I because of the ones that you list, maybe there has been some moving of some of the partnerships from department-specific budgets to the coordinator's budget. Can we get a better outline and maybe sent to us separately of what has been done to identify the partnerships? Why is this the amount requested? And uh, have there been partnerships moved from departments Again, that's, I'm looking at Botno as, an, as a good example um, to the coordinator's office, and that's why 